So Alhamdulillah, we're able to uh, fix uh, that little glitch that we have in the system, inshallah. So let's come back to um, our, our lecture for today. So we were saying that, inshallah, we will be take, we'll take a look at the five pillars of Islam. I want to reiterate just so we uh, we can catch up with those that, are, that missed on the, the audio message. Um, we have five pillars of Islam, and these five pillars help us ground ourselves in the minimum expectation for every believer in Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu told us in a hadith, and this hadith was narrated by Ibn Umar, when he said that the Prophet Sallallahu said, Buni al-Islam ala khams. That Islam, was be, Islam has been built upon five pillars. As-shahadat an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. That we testify that there is no God worthy to be worshipped except our Allah and that Prophet Muhammad is his last and final messenger. Wa iqam is salah, that we establish the salah. Wa ita is zakah, and we pay zakah. Wa saw in Ramadan, we fast in the month of Ramadan. Wa hajj al bayt and we go to hajj. So today's um, Kharaka section, inshallah, I want to take a few moments to try to explain what those five pillars of Islam means and how we should understand them. Because without understanding the five pillars of Islam, we might not be giving our religion the due um, right that it deserves. Because we might testify to believe, however, our day-to-day -day action might show to be different, might not collide or might not correspond with what we are actually testifying to follow. So inshallah, I'm going to start from the beginning, the, the, the testimony that there's no God worthy to be worshipped. Many Muslims are born into this world, through, into, through they, they come into this world into a, 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 a Muslim family. And when they come into a Muslim family, they get that ni'mah, that rahmah, that their parents would pronounce the ikoma and the adhan, in their ear, and then they become Muslims. They become Muslims. Other people would have to go around, they, 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 for the most part, we're born into a non-Islamic family, and then by themselves, they find a way into Islam. So they become, they revert back into Islam, because we, we understand that as Muslims that every child that's born is born into the religion as a Muslim. Every child that's born is born a Muslim. Because they know, based on their fitra, their natural inclination, that God should be one. God is one. So we demonstrate that with an, an example, but I don't want to go that route right now. The testification, the testimony that we hold, saying that there's no God worthy to be worshipped, is la ilaha illallah. We explain that so that every Muslim understand, understands what it means, and the power and the importance of it in our day-to-day -day life. Allah tells, the Prophet Sallallahu tells us that this testimony is for us to say, La ilaha illallah, meaning there's no other God worthy to be worshipped except Allah. We understand that there, there could be other people, other things that people worship, and they call them God. They give them all of this love and adoration, However, there is no God that's worthy to be worshipped, that's worthy to be worshipped except Allah. So that statement, the scholars explain it to be nafiyun wa ifbat. Nafiyun wa ifbat. Nafiyun means negation. You negate something and then you affirm something. You negate something and then you affirm something. So let's break it down a little bit. When we say la ilaha, we're negating the fact that there should be any God worthy to be worshipped. We're negating the fact, the fact that there should be any God worthy to be worshipped. Be it an animal, be it an ocean, be it a mountain, be it a human being, be it money, be it whatever it is. Nothing, come, nothing can be a God that's worthy to be worshipped. Nothing can be a God. That's worthy to be worshipped. Nothing should be bowed down for. Nothing should be praised or loved the way God should be loved. Now, that's the negation. Then the affirmation now comes, illallah. La ilaha is a negation. Illallah is the affirmation that we only worship one God, and that God is Allah. That God is the God that we worship. He is Allah. All of the other things that people would worship on earth cannot be like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Those things are weak. Those things were created. Those things cannot benefit. They cannot harm. They cannot, they cannot give life in abundance. They cannot cause death. All of these things that people worship cannot be God. That's why we say la ilaha, meaning a negation. There is no God worthy to be worshipped. In Allah, then we affirm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only God that should be worshipped. So an explanation of this comes in the, in the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Furqan, Surah 25 of the Quran, verse 3. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, verse 3 and verse 4. Uh, sorry, verse 2 and verse 3. Verse 2 and verse 3. In verse 2, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ الَّذِي لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدًا وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ شَرِيكٌ فِي الْمُلْكِ وَخَلَقَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ فَقَدَّرَهُ تَقْدِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us here that he is the God, because we said la ilaha, there is no God worthy to be worshipped, illallah, except Allah. How do we then know Allah? If we would not worship anything else except Allah, how do we understand who Allah is so we can worship him? Allah tells us in this verse, alladhi lahu mulku samawati wal arun. He is the God that has the dominion of the heavens and the earth. Is the God that has the dominion of the seven heavens and the seven earth. Meaning he creates it, he maintains it, he sustains the seven heavens and the earth, and nothing has that kind of power. He is the God that has the dominion, the power of the heaven, seven heavens and the seven earth. And he says, He has not taken any son. And he has not, this is not taking any partner. He does not have any partner in his dominion, in his superiority, in his lordship. He's not taking any partners. And he's created everything. He has created everything. And aside, aside from creating everything, he had make, put on uh, the predestination and, and proportioned everything that he had created. So Allah explains some of his attributes that no God can ever claim to have or ever boast to have. The first attribute he explains of himself is that he is the God that has the power of the seven heavens. He is the God that created the seven heavens. He is the God that makes sure that the sama, the heaven, the sky, is standing with no pillars holding it and it does not fall. He is the guy that holds the sama and for it not to fall. There is no pillar that's holding it in place. There's no pillar that we can see that's holding it in place. So Allah tells us that he's the God that has the power to create and has created the heavens and the earth. And he also tells us that he does not have a son. So people claim that God have a son, the God we worship, does not have a son, does not have a son. He has slaves that he has sent as messenger, Mathalan, for example, Prophet Isa alayhi salam, where people, our siblings in faith, claim to be the son of God. Allah tells us here, he has not taken anybody, any of his creation as a son. Then he also goes further to say, to say, and he has no partners, no partners in his mulk, in his power, in his dominion, in his lordship. No one shares the power of Allah with him. No one shares the power of Allah with him. In the, in the scriptures of the, of the Christians, they've written in there that aside from the throne of Allah, there is also the thrones of the tribe of the Jewish leaders. So those tribes would have the same power as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanallah. We refute that because we believe in one God and there's nobody that has the kind of power that he has. No one shares power with him. No one manages this world with him. 
and no one should have the same type of lordship over the things he had created as him. So he says, well, There's nobody like God. Nothing shares power with him in his lordship. He had created everything. He had created everything. And he had proportioned the things that he had created. And I'm still explaining in the law. I'm still explaining in the law. And he has proportioned everything that he had created. The next verse, verse 3, in Surah Al Furqan, Surah 25, verse 3, Allah goes further to explain the things that he can do that other gods that we negate when we say La ilaha, the gods that we negate, the things that they can never ever do, that he can do, that makes him a god. Allah says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Other people have taken other gods, people have taken other gods except Allah. We shouldn't be doing that because our statement for entering into Islam is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So La ilaha, there's no God worthy to be worshipped. But Allah tells us here that other people have taken other things of worship. They've taken other things that they worship that Allah explains. Those gods that they've taken and they worship those gods, Allah says, those gods have not created anything. Rather, those gods themselves were created. Those gods themselves were created. The previous verse, Allah tells us that he created everything. So in this verse, he's telling us that the gods that other people have taken, they have not created anything, rather they were created. And those gods, they don't have any power by themselves to cause harm or to benefit anyone. They don't have the power to cause death. Or to give life in abundance. Or to resurrect. Or to resurrect anyone that has passed on. All of these attributes are the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can have. Allah has in his lordship and he demonstrates them day in, day out. Day in, day out. So when we take other things as God, which can never ever meet this requirement, we're just disgracing ourselves and humiliating ourselves. We should only worship a God, a God that has the power over the seven heavens and the earth, a God that has not taken a child, a God that does not have partners, a God that has created everything and proportioned everything, a God that that can create and was not created. A God that has the power to cause harm or to benefit. A God that can cause death and can give life. And a God that can resurrect. And that God is Allah. So we say, La ilaha, there is no God worthy to be worshipped. In Allah, except Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Muhammad Prophet Muhammad is a slave and his messenger that he has sent to us. In this current era, in this current time, until the end time, the shahada would be La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Before, the, before Prophet Muhammad was sent, the other prophets that came before him, they testified that La ilaha illallah for example, Musa Rasulullah, the time of Musa, and when Prophet Isa came, he became La ilaha illallah, Isa Rasulullah. This is the era of Prophet Muhammad until the end time. It now becomes La ilaha illallah, 
Muhammadur Rasulullah. So we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is no God worthy to be worshipped except him. And we also testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his last and final messenger. And Prophet, we cannot distinguish between Allah and his prophets. They go hand in hand. You cannot believe in Allah and disbelieve in the prophets. For example, we have some sects in Islam today. They claim to be the Qur'aniyun. They're known as the Qur'aniyun. They believe in Allah. However, they don't believe in the prophets. They believe in the Quran. But if, if, they, if they've not seen anything in the Quran, they don't follow it. Even if the, if the prophet has, said, uh, has recommended for us to do it or prescribed for us to do it, they don't do it. Methalan, for example, they, said, they say that they, 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 they think that the prophet said certain things within him, himself and they don't think that came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They recite the Quran. They observe salah. The salah, how we observe salah, how many records we observe, is not captured in the Quran. The Prophet ﷺ told us that. He taught us that. He demonstrated it every day of his life. Why do they observe salah today and the salah is not captured in the Quran? The Quran tells us, again, in kuntum Allah If you love Allah, follow me. Allah. So they claim to love Allah, they claim to believe in Allah, but Allah tells them in the Quran, if you claim to believe in me and love me, then follow the prophet that I've sent to you, Prophet Muhammad. Follow him, then I would love you. Then I would love you. So we cannot really split between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah tells us in the Quran, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ Allah tells us that in the prophet, there is for us a beautiful example for those that want to meet the good face of Allah. So you cannot split between Allah and the prophet. So we say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. There is no God worthy to be worshipped, and that prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we spent a little bit of time talking about the first pillar of Islam, which is the testimony to enter into Islam. So a lot of people can actually testify to say there's no God worthy to be worshipped except Allah. A lot of people can testify that. Allah also gives us the rest of the four pillars, the rest of the four pillars to demonstrate our testimony. So we testify that there's no God worthy to be worshipped except Allah and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi is his last and final messenger. Add to that, we have four different ways we demonstrate that testimony. The first way is by observing salah. Second pillar, paying zakat. Third pillar, fasting in the month of Ramadan. Fourth pillar, and going on a hajj. Fifth pillar, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, I'm going to start, I'm going to go into the second pillar, inshallah, now. Where Allah says, when the Prophet sallallahu says, wa sawmur ramadan, wa, 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 wa iqam is salah, that we establish the salah, we pray salah. <laughs> if we're not praying salah, if we're not praying salah, it, 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 there's a question to be asked about our faith. There's a question to be asked about our faith. Because one of the ways we distinguish ourselves from other people is by observing salah. The Prophet wasallam has been quoted or it's been said by the scholars that we observe salah to demonstrate that we're Muslim. We observe salah to demonstrate that we're Muslim. La farqa bayn al-Muslim wal kafir illa bi salah. There's no difference between a believer and an unbeliever except by the observance of salah. So when you neglect your salah, you're just showing that you're not a believer. You're just showing that you're not a believer. Another thing for us to understand is that in the, in the, in the, in the third verse of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on the second and the third verse, the second verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي هُدًا لِلْمُتَّكِينَ that this Quran, that is no, there's no doubt about it, it is guidance for those that have the piety of Allah. How do we know these people? The next verse says, 
الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومن ما رزقناهم يوفقون. Those that believe in the unseen and they establish salah. So for us to be among those that are pious, we have to believe in the unseen God and the angels that we cannot see them here on earth. Where you qimun as salah and we get to establish salah and we, what Allah has blessed us with, we mean marazak in their home, but what he's blessed us with, what do we do? Yom pikun, we give out in arms, we help our people with it. So we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains how beautiful it is for us to follow through with this type of belief system in Islam. The Prophet sallallahu tells us that on the day of judgment, everyone will be standing and nobody, nobody would have the opportunity or the right or the willpower to move their feet until they've been asked a few questions. Until they've been asked a few questions. One of the, and he said, the first question we will be asked is about our salah. The first question we will be asked is about our salah. When we demonstrate our salah to be good, if our salah is good, the rest of the questioning process will be easy. However, if our salah is not properly done, not done on time, not done the right way, the way the prophet had commanded us to do, the way he demonstrated it, when, when he prayed, when he was on earth, then there's a problem there. There's a problem with answering our questions regarding our salah. There's going to be a bigger problem with answering the rest of the questions that we have. And that's because in the salah, then her and in fashia, he will move well back. Because when we demonstrate and establish our salah, it prevents us from all of this evil act, all of these immoralities and things that can throw us into hell. It pushes us away from it. So salah is beneficial for us. It's for us to demonstrate that we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's also beneficial for us here on earth and in, the, and in the end time. Another surah that also shows us or shows us the benefit of salah is the surah al muminun Surah Al-Mu'minun, verse 2. Allah tells us in Surah Al-Mu'minun that قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ The believers, they have succeeded. How do we know they've succeeded? And how do we know the believers? Allah says, الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِئُونَ Those that during their salah, they have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. خَائِفُونَ They have the fear of Allah when they observe the salah. Again, we cannot states that we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophets and we neglect our salah. That's how an hypocrite be behaves. We as Muslims should not behave that way. When we say we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we follow through, we demonstrate that belief by observing salah. The, the third, I'm, I'm going to go into, because of time, I'm going to go into the, the third one now. The third pillar of Islam is where we, we observe zakah, we pay zakah. Paying zakat might not necessarily be for all of the all of the Muslims because we would have to earn a certain amount of money and have saved a certain amount of money for over a year before we then fall in under the category of people that would pay zakat. Zakat is a process for us to purify our earnings. And when we purify our earnings, we're also helping the community. We're helping the community in the, in the process. So we go to purify our earnings by paying 2.5% out of whatever amount of money we've had with us for more than one year. More than after a year, it becomes zakatable, right? Zakat can enter on many things, not just your finance, right? If you own a property and you've been sitting on it for a longer period of time, more than a year, now you gotta pay 2.5% of the value of that. If you, have a, if you have livestock, for example, the same thing can come on under it. If you have gold and silver, the same thing comes under that too. So understanding that we can use this process to cleanse our earnings and also better the life of other people within our community. And truth be told, this is one way that the Quran, Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used or slated down for us to follow. And if we do that, 
we can significantly reduce the amount of poverty that we have on earth. Imagine the richer people of this earth, everyone paying 2.5% of their earnings to the poorer communities every year. We would see people having more money. We would see people being able to take care of their families and send them to good schools. So this is one way that Islam helps make everyone somewhat equal. However, we've been elevated by stages over ourselves. So I'm not going to spend too much time on zakat. I'm going to go into um, Psalm, which is fasting in the month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya ayyuhu alladhina amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyam. Kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattakun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhu alladhina amanu. Those of you that have believed, all you believers, kutiba alaykum usiyam. Fasting in the month of Ramadan has been has been established, has been prescribed for you. The same way it's, it's been prescribed for those that came before you. So the Christians and the Jews were also prescribed fasting. Why? So you can attain piety of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we fast the way he had access to fast in the month of Ramadan, now we fall under those that can potentially gain the piety of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're restricted from eating, drinking, and other things that we, that, that we would normally do be, 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 between the time when the sun would rise and the time when the sun would set. As Muslims, we know that some people are exempted from it. Children, for example, the baby infants, for example, pregnant women, for example, a person that's traveling, a longer distance, a person that's fasting, the older generation where if they go on fasting, for example, it can affect their health or those that are on some type of illness and they take some type of medication every so often and it falls within the time when they were observing fasting, they will not be able to fast. So we know that some people have been exempted from fasting. However, the benefit of fasting is so much so that fasting one day, fasting one day, can give you your al-jannah if you fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa explains to us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him that as-sawmuli wa ana hajizibi that fasting is for me, Allah, and I would reward the people that, that fast or however, reward I feel like giving them. Normally when we do something good, we get a blessing, we get 10 hasanat for one good. We get 10 hasanat, and we can get up to 700 hasanat for one good. However, with fasting, the angels would just write that this person fasted, and that's it. They don't have anything else to write. They cannot write the value of that fast that you've done. It's a good act. They cannot write the value on it because Allah has kept that value to himself. On the day of judgment, that can be the only thing that would save a Muslim and have them go to he heaven because go, go to Jannah because when everything is scaled, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can decide what amount he wants to put on each of the fasting that we've done on earth. So we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us fasting as a way to demonstrate our obedience to him, also a way to save us from sins and from punishment and hopefully, inshallah, be eligible for his mercy. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about fasting, that then fasting has been prescribed in the month of Ramadan. And we know that in this month is when the Quran was sent down from the highest Beitul Isa, uh, from Laul Mahfuz to Beitul Isa. That's when the Quran was, was sent down. That is during the month of Ramadan. And the majority of the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were also revealed in the month of Ramadan. So we see that Ramadan can help, really, really help us a lot because going back into how the last 10 days were explained to us, the last 10 days in Ramadan, the Prophet Sallallahu told us that one of those nines, one of those nines has the ninth of destiny, the ninth of power. 
the night where things can be changed for good, the night where the blessing in it is more than the, a modern worship or service in the path of God for 80, 83 years, for 83 years. In Surah Al-Qadr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Inna anzalnahu fi laylat al-Qadr, wa ma adaraka ma laylat al-Qadr, haza modu shahid, laylat al-Qadr, khayrun min al-fishah. The night of power, the night of power is better, is better than 1,000 months. And if you catch, catch, calculate that, it becomes a little bit over 83 years. So just that one night of work and dedication and humbleness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you get a reward that's more than 83 years work. Again, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed for us to do is for our own benefit. It's for our own benefit. And the last one is Hajj. And um, we go to Hajj. Al-Hajj Ashuru Malumat. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, Al-Hajj Ashuru Malumat. Hajj go, for us to go to Hajj is in a month that's known. You cannot go to Hajj in Ramadan. You cannot go to Hajj in Ramadan. You cannot go to Hajj in Sopa. That, that's not Ramadan. That's not, you cannot go to Hajj in um, um, Rabiu Thani, for example. We go to Hajj in the month that's known. Zul Hijjah is the month that we go to Hajj. So Allah says, Al Hajj Ashuru Ma Ashuru Ma Lumat, Faman Farada Fihin Al Hajja, whoever Hajj has become compulsory over. That, that means they're getting into the stage where they've taken on the Iran and they started Hajj. Faman Farada Fihin Al Hajja, Fala Rafasa, they cannot have sexual relation with their, with their spouse. Wala Jid, Wala Pusuka, they cannot become passive, they cannot become bad they're people of the, that are disobedient. Wala Jidala Fil Hajj. They cannot sit there and start arguing with people while they're in Hajj. Whatever good you do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows it. And Allah tells us, what does Allah do? So make provisions. Prepare. And the best type of provision or the best type of preparation is for you to have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, And fear me. Those of you that are of right thinking. I just want to make make it known real quick that we cannot borrow money to go to Hajj. If you don't have the money, you're not ready to go to Hajj yet. You cannot use a credit card to go to Hajj. And you come back and you start paying little by little. And all month over month, your, your carryover balance will start incurring interest. That is not Hajj. You don't borrow money to go to Hajj. You don't offend or disobey a lot to go to Hajj. Because we know that we're not supposed to be dealing in interest anyway. So you save up, have the money, then you go to hand. If you go once a once in a lifetime, it is sufficient. We understand that some people go every year or every other year. The Lyle Ham is better that we go once and that's fine. We can also sponsor other people to go to hand. Inshallah, I know that I just touched on the five uh, pillars of Islam. Again, I'm going to reiterate that the five pillars of Islam is that we testify that there's no God worthy to be worshipped except Allah and the Prophet Muhammad's is last and final messenger, and then we, 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 we establish the salah, we pay zakat, we go to, um, we, we fast the month of Ramadan, and we go to Hajj, for those that have the, the, the means to go to Hajj, inshallah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enlighten our hearts with, the, with the, the, light of, the light of the Quran, and guide us to the right path, keep us safe in the deen, and all of the fitna that are going on right now, like coronavirus, May Allah keep us safe from it, inshallah. May Allah protect us from it, inshallah. Protect our family members and the entire Muslim from it, inshallah. May Allah make our affairs easy. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirat hasana wa kina adhaban nar. Subhana rabbik, rabbil aizzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Now we don't have enough time, so we're not going to take any questions, inshallah. Um, if we have any question, um, you can send me a call, uh, call me or send me a text, and inshallah, we'll be able to uh, answer our questions. I ask Allah SWT to protect us and count us among the inheritors of Al-Janat al, al Assalamu